a lot of us struggle in in that same way also you know in in dealing with imperfections and and the whole process of sanctification that goes on before we even get a glimpse of glorification in this yes. lifetime diba? yes that is so true and i think like that's something that um i'm not completely like what's the word solved in my mind like that parang making friends with making friends with the imperfect parts of you i i'm not i don't think i'm there yet um because i don't know i i seem to have grown up with quite hectic standards for just myself in general and like what i'm what i should do what how i should act and stuff and i'm still unlearning that to this day that like my goal is not to reach my standards parang i'm not the I'm not the benchmark for for success, my standards that I make. It's like God's standards for me. And those I will never really completely understand yet. And th- they will change all the time depending on the season mm-hmm. of my life. Um but yeah, like I I I I also think that like Yeah, I just want to get rid of my perfectionist tendencies because It's yeah, like you said, it's actually beautiful. Like the parts of us that make us, the parts of us that are imperfect, actually make us more more beautiful and unique. If we were all just like perfect, like who would be different, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why would have Jesus died? He would have died for nothing. If we exactly. were all perfect. <laughs> That's why right. it's part exactly. of the no beautiful story of redemption. But mm-hmm. I guess I, I want to ask. Are your expectations of yourself higher than what you feel are, are the expectations of people around you? Because yeah. I feel you, you think so. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and that's what I find difficult with my line of work is for mm-hmm. the most part, I'm kind of like the one who sets the bar. You know, mm-hmm. like when I, for example, when I work with uh, like branded content or something like that, they just give me guidelines, but they don't say this video has to be like this amazing or when i do a podcast like i'm not told that like this this episode has to be so in depth and whatever mm-hmm. i'm ga- i'm given like the bare minimum by the people that i work with and then i'm kind of the one who set who sets the bar like like super duper high <laughs> up seven notches <laughs> literally i'm like oh you think i'm gonna just do this like Think again. <laughs> um, Let me spend seven so, whole days on this one tiny video that you mm-hmm. want me to do. It's crazy. So I think it's also like, um, I think my workflow also has become much better as I realize that not everything has to be like, it doesn't necessarily mean that something has a lot of effort that it's good. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. even if, even if you're, you're doing something like not necessarily effortless but like with less production value it could still be effective and it could still be a great episode or video or something like that so i'm learning how to do that um nowadays how do you deal with that though like because i feel like the line of work that you do the line of work that we do There's yeah. a lot of consistency that that trails it, you know. Like you know, sometimes it doesn't even matter how good the video is. People just want a semblance of consistency in what you put mm-hmm. out there. And if you're a perfectionist, you're constantly beating yourself up over one tiny thing, and you're revising and changing and doing everything all over again. But then I'm sure you have to catch yourself so that you'll be able to do that. How do you deal with that kind of pressure, and how do you kind of shed off? that level of imper- uh, perf- perfectionism, you know, to mm-hmm. achieve things. I think it's just knowing that the concept, like the concept of something that's good is, uh, what's the word? It's relative to whoever mm-hmm. sees or um, experiences your content. And what has helped me blur the line there is collaboration. So not doing everything just by myself. I have people who are able to gauge with me that like, yeah, I might have this one idea of what this video should look like. But then this person that I'm working with, whom I also respect um, their creative vision and what they consider as 
um, excellent. Also says that actually this route is is already good. Then I'm just I guess that 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 puts me in like a, a nice a level playing field. That like okay, I'm not the only one that has input in this, and you like it. You like it. Actually, yeah, I also like it as well. Parang ganon, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I'm not the only one in charge of my content anymore, which is, is I like that. I like that concept. Yeah, but I'm feeling that's the importance really of um, having community, right? Because exactly. if you're creative, you're a lot inside your head. You're spending a mm-hmm. lot of time in your head, and you're just there's so many voices already, and so many things that factor in your in your own creative process that if you don't ask outside perspective you're just gonna stay in your head and it's just gonna mm-hmm. keep swirling around until you don't produce anything so mm-hmm. that's why collaboration is the mother of innovation you guys always remember Ooh, that yes it sure <laughs> is recently watched the preaching by matt chandler where he said something in the lines of suffering reveals some of the most hidden idols that we have in our lives and that resonated with me so much because i feel like many of course, this doesn't include there are outliers of, of sickness and, and and other things that you probably have gone through. Not all suffering, but some suffering reveals those kinds of idols. And I've experienced that in my own life. And the constant thing that God would always show me was I loved my comfort more than I loved mm-hmm. Christ. And um. whatever that comfort, whatever form of comfort that was, whether that was a romantic relationship or an achievement at work or being the best at a specific thing or having these people commend you for the work that you're doing online. I always loved that more than I loved Christ. And so he he had to let me suffer also through depression and anxiety to show me that you see how you think these are worthy gods. You see how you think you're a worthy God, but you're not. It all leads to emptiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. And and I definitely also have to ask myself, what are the things in my life that take up the place that only God himself can take? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think just that definitely has all... It's really hard, you know, to be in our line of work and to not take, you know, the accolades that we receive or the compliments that we receive or the attention that we receive as something that defines our worth and value. Um, So it's also understanding that, like, it's not... This is not everything, you know? Mm -hmm. It's it's not, like, me, like... um, Like, pining over or working my hardest for people to just say like we really like this or you're doing well like that's not gonna satisfy that's one of the things i i repeat to myself this is not gonna satisfy this is not gonna satisfy Mm -hmm. um because you can definitely be tossed and turned by the wind if you are you have that understanding that other things other than god's love and grace and sacrifice will satisfy our hearts for the longings that it has you know Mm. um so yeah that's really it all goes back to him honestly it all goes back to him it's funny like that understanding that the grace that we need to accept the grace of god comes from him also yes does that are we diving into calvinism now (laughs) calvinism (laughs) You are totally but, depraved. Even yeah. you. <laughs> no, but it's just that just that still boggles my head. The fact that in order to receive the love that God has given us, even God provides for us the ability to receive the love that He gives. I'm like, what? That's crazy, right? I, I it encapsulates it- the entire experience. <laughs> but but also, at the same time, that's really the perfect image of grace and mercy. Because if at in this whole process, we have a say in mm-hmm. deciding, I'm going to be a good person and I'm going to start accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior. 
if you're the one that just makes that decision without the without the Holy Spirit really removing the scales of your eyes, mm-hmm. then to a certain extent, you're the one that did that. It's still you. So, yeah, it's still you. But mm-hmm. because it was it it wasn't that Christ was there underwater and you swam towards him. It was you were dead underwater and he, he rescued came. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he came. Then that's how you know it's that's total grace, really. Um I guess it's another entire episode that we can we can talk about <laughs> about election. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs>